Since the days of sail and into the age of steam, sailors have passed about myths and legends born from the sea. Once, when I was a junior midshipman on traps in the west of Sumatra, we encountered a derelict freighter, which drifted between us for two hours, before vanishing into the thick fog. And when out on the ocean alone, such encounters can take on the air of a supernatural. One time early in April, I'd sent top hat and sunshine down the coast to deliver new fittings for the St. Mary's White Lighthouse. As the seasons changed, freak storms and strange weather phenomena would suddenly spring up, and the Cardona Lighthouse had been badly damaged in one such storm, hence the unusual job. It was a hot Monday evening as the two tugs finished their delivery began making the three-hour journey back to Big City. The air was heavy and electric. Well, I assure you, I can't start with this thing without this beautiful run. I can't wear it more soon as I heard you, please. Who heard you, please, as you spoke about that aircraft carrier from the evening, or haven't you? The United States in Canada swam between the air hole. I'm sure he can. Anyway, what's the matter? It's perfect sailing conditions. We just have to follow the shoreline in the big sea. The current's practically pushing as long as it is. Look at this ocean. It's as flat as a little pond. Even you, if you're up there in the cloud, just see that now. Come. All I can see from up here, my dear sunshine, is smart Alex Switzerland, who's blissfully unaware of the storm clouds I can see building up on our seaman's side. towards it. It's a ship that would be in great contact with the harbour, surely. You may even be able to tour in the port. I should do. In that way, we ignore it and let the current carry us fix it. Yeah, but this way, we may well miss the harbour mouth if we keep following the current. 
that make tears into the yesterday. Australia don't know rocks. True, I doubt we'll be able to spot Billy Lightship ship in this town for. Yes, I think you're right, sunshine. Make for that bell, but go easy just in case. Keeping their ears peeled and within sight of each other, the two star tugs turned out of the current and made their way towards the bell, sweeping their powerful floodlights through the rain. Stop giving it. Now, look here, stars. We found the ship first. 
A legal backing is all well and good, but out here on the water, it's going to back you up. Look, the ship this size drifted in sea lanes is a navigational hazard. Salvage right regardless. Shall we take her a tour? Four tons are better than two after all. Yeah, I suppose so, sunshine. But we've had to be so to take you. Ship this size should be worth millions in scrap iron. Nonsense. Would you buy it for sale? Quality. A one third straight, and that's my final offer. You can either help us and take a hefty sum back your precious Captain Zero, or go back empty pocketed. That. Point Steve. Just one. One third Steve. We've learned the rules of several more time, Nick. Tom Hat and Seveny began to make plans to take the Chimera in tow. Sunshine, however, could not shake a finger on the wings. She's a cool lady, that's the same. Yeah, I haven't seen a ship like this since the last war. Bought in home in Canada. It's painted on her stern. Sunshine, but I'm sure the first thing is to be in some hand. We could use our hands. So, what do you need? I'm sure two lines up to where the dictators are known on their skill. We're going to tie up to our anchors. We need you to hold the starboard anchor steady while Zebedee ties up the uh, Right, sure thing. Slip Muffet up underneath the huge anchor, holding it against the Chimera's decaying hut, whilst Tom had tied off a thick horse. Right, that was small gap. Take up the slab, Zebedee, and we'll test it. Right, now let's secure. Don't shy, but do try to be on an anchor. We need you. Slow there, look out! The old anchor chain had snapped under the strap, sending the heavy anchor crashing down onto Zip's bow before sliding off into the water. Seventy cast off before the wave dragged him under, but Zip was not bearing as well. Oh no! Oh no! I'm sinking! Shipping water! Which I'm glad right, you're going to make an But look at the devils. It was bad. Zip's bow was crumpled like a discarded sign. He was rapidly taking on the air. But they got him back to Big City Pass. Thought you'd get some back to port on board. But we're lost. That's how we did it. We will be supplied with oil tank and got to a brand still. Reason. Hold him there for a second. I've got an idea. I'm not exactly going anywhere. Sunshine ball up alongside him and rigged up multiple lines between them before drawing them tight, using his own buoyancy to prop the other switcher up. There, I suppose the damage in the water. Can you pump some beer out the rest of the foot? Yes, sir, I think so. Oh, 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 thanks, thanks, Sunshine. We'll have to stay lashed up like this. We should get us back to Big City, okay? Oh, oh, oh. If we can stay out, there is it. Right, Tom, uh, we're going to try and take this old key toe then with the other anchor. Yes. Well, let's call the anchor this time. You will have to tie yourself off. Have you still got steam, Zip? My boiler went out, but I'm going to ask you there. I'll have to push up, Zip. Did you hear that scream? What? That anchor would have fallen on my head. But before it fell, I heard someone scream warning from the bubble. And I jumped it back.
Fish. Alert the Coast Guard. See that's a rescue party. Yes, the squad's breaking up now. You must get back to Big City and report the CAC. The rescue won't do much good. Tell them that ship was in steel and wood. It was a strange convoy that steamed into Big City Port that night. On board tugs, two out of action, limping home together, and babbling about a ship. The Coast Guard went out straight away to mount a rescue. 
Oh, in the morning, the first reports came back in under the scanner field. No wreckage near the rocks or in the estuary. And the night ship's radar reports no large ships passing nearby in the night. Possible. Ships of 17,000 years. The facts remain, Tom Hatt, that Lily only recorded you for passing in the night. Apparently, you were drifting into the rocks, and she had to sound you off with her klaxon. What were you doing fooling around near Denver Bank anyway? You can't claim you didn't see me on such a clear night. Yeah, and I got wet with an anchor. Look at my hull. Last night was clear with a half moon and mild spout. Sid just crammed himself into a cliff face, and you're just trying to cover up his neck with his pissy neck story. He smiled himself up the floor, after all. Oh, but, sir, what would these stars have to gain from calling on his head to speak? Watch it, sunshine, or I'll have you all charged with wasting my time and resources. More collaborating, wondering the same story. So a seemingly derelict vessel kept itself to explode on Dender Rock. Can you repeat the name of the passenger hat and the vessel's name? And the ship was the Kate Kira. Coast Guard, sir, I'm afraid these folks have clearly been wasting your time. I'll gladly compensate you for your efforts. Very well, Captain Stark. We'll hear from us about this. What did she look like? Sir? The Chimera. What did she look like? Was she still the jewel of the seas? You mean, sir, if you believe us, yes, yeah, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir? Sir? Well, sir, I believe you. And you and somebody being worried. I'll sort out any difficulties with Captain Zero. Now, so you all understand my reaction. Know this. The Chimera was my former command. She was a liner lost on New Year's Eve in 1909. She was captained at the time by a colleague of mine. Hey, Alan, Alan, Alan. What's all this thing? About these ten cents. Lord Stink is waiting for you at the municipal dump. Is it what Then go deliver fuel oil to Lily, harass Zoran, or park yourself on the harbour mouth and look pretty. Just go. Right away, sir. Right away, sir. Go bring Zoran now, sir. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Yes. Ten cents was right at the peak. Many years ago, I had captain the Kaiban, the finest ship in these waters, until she was lost under my successor, Captain Asquith, after he and everyone aboard abandoned her in a freak storm. Whatever happened by the Chimera was never known, but I think Sunshine had the right idea. Maybe some freak compliments of the ocean currents sent the poor tugs back to that mysterious night. But I prefer to think that instead, he rose the Chimera from some watery grave for a final attempt to make safe harbor. Either way, I consider it a comfort that she is in some desolate hulk, drifting the ocean alone with her fate unknown, but is instead now at eternal peace.